Hi everybody. Hello, it's Monday. Good to see you all. Well, I don't really see you all, but I see me. <laughs> I know you're there. Uh, Marianne Kilkenny, Women for Living in Community, and it's Monday again, and we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about defining what's the definition of community. Well, <clears throat> I think a lot of people probably romanticize it. And I think that's been my experience very much so of like, oh, yes, community, it's so wonderful. And it is. And I'd like to today give you some definitions, both sort of simplistic and not, to sort of de demystify the whole feeling of what is community anyway. So you can imagine as someone who has actually done, uh, been involved with community for a long time, I have a lot of people that, that you know, I, I use it a lot. And oftentimes I'm not sure that people are actually understanding what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so that's why I'm bringing it up today. I figured uh, I've been through this. This is part of why I do the Facebook Lives and what I do with my, 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 my life is to encourage others like me to live in community. Well, and that's why I'm bringing it up to define it first. And people ask me, so what do you really do? And I consistently need to come up with something to, hi Nat, to, to I consistently um, come up with things that I need to like make it more concise. So I'm working on that. And, I, and right now, when people say, what do you do? I say I assist older women to take action towards developing a community of connections. And there's sometimes blank stares or hopefully tell me more. And the way I do that is looking at alternative housing models for us as we age. There might still be a blank stare. <laughs> hopefully not. And that is uh, then I'll say, you know, like the Golden Girls. And that's when I usually get a smile, <laughs> which is what I'm really going for, of course, is for somebody to actually engage about it. Tell me more. So when I talk about the Golden Girls alternative housing models, common reactions are, do we have to live together? Or is it like a commune? I don't know what they're thinking back there, but I don't think we're sharing all those things. And another one that's very common for lots of people who I've been with, and that is, um, well, I'm, I'm an introvert, and I don't think it would work for me. And I can't tell you the number of people who have said that, and I completely, completely, completely understand it. And that is... Yeah, often many of us are introverts. Thus, oftentimes we need community because it's about connections. Welcome, Julie. I want to say hi to all of the fans that are here commenting. Moving right along. So, um, me, again, Mary Ann Kilkenny, living in community, women living in community. I'm going to start with some really pretty simple definitions because that's sort of how I would like you to remember this and we'll get into a little bit more finite uh, or con later. So I think of community as not going it alone or a group, group of friends or another person who I have their back they have mine. Pretty simple. Yeah, we like to start with simple, right? And before I forget, because I could, you know, <laughs> that is, 
at the end of the Facebook Live today, I'm going to have a couple of pearls and some tricks to give to you. So hang in here with me. <clears throat> so as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about what are there like tests or something or ways that we could figure out who might be people that I could live in community with or be part of my, my community. So some off the cuff ones I came up with were someone who I would be willing to ask and maybe they'd actually agree to take me to the airport for my 6 a.m. flight, meaning we have to get up really early. So this is probably before someone said, well, can't you just take an Uber? <laughs> Better one is probably that you have to go in for a colonoscopy and you need a ride. I don't understand why they make somebody wait with you. I've never understood that. Uh, but usually so I'm so weak from not, not eating anything, I don't really fight with them about it. But that's somebody that you know you can count on. And, and just think, if it was somebody that lived next door or in your same house, so they could come back and flop in bed especially after the airport trip. Um, what about, and then get into something really sticky wicket, and that is, what if you don't have enough money to pay the power bill, and you need just a temporary loan? Who might you talk to or be willing to even ask that for, about? Uh, another one might be some, somebody that uh, you really just need to vent to somebody and you don't really need advice and you're willing to ask them to do that and feel safe enough to do that. Another measurement for me of, of people who I feel very connected with is, is when they come up my walkway, I actually am really glad to see them. I mean, I have a, a feeling that's, that's warm in my heart and I'm always glad, you know, I'm always glad to see them. And another one is, if I have a disagreement or a misunderstanding with this person, we move through it and we get closer by just going through it on the other side. So any of you out there in comment land, have any ones that come up for you when you think of people who you want in your community or who are actually part of your community as I just defined it. You can write the comments in there. I'm looking forward to hearing them. If you don't have anything like that, feel free to give me a thumbs up or a heart or any of those kinds of things. So, yeah, I'm going to move along here and um, let's see. Next thing would be a little bit more of a uh, I think community might be overused, and I think probably I have a problem with this because I, my dad was a semantics professor. So words, you know, are important to me. I was grew up that way. And I think community is so overused, it's lost its meaning, and that's why I needed to bring this up to you today. Uh, so one of the definitions that I have that actually is in my book, uh, Your Quest for Home, Finding Your Ideal Community, and one that I actually start talks when I'm talking about community is one that I paraphrased from um, Creating Community Anywhere, this book right here that I talked about last week and that I actually put in the notes there. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm looking at Julie's. Julie's uh, comment about her comment is somebody that will post bail. <laughs> That's probably true, right? Uh huh. Okay. Now I'm off off topic here. <laughs> so creating community anywhere is a great book because it also says finding support and connection in a fragmented world. You also have this in I just put it in the in the um, information, so you have it. So I'm going to uh, go through it, and that would be, uh, these are the five, five, I think there's five, yeah. Um, a group of people who participate in common practices, 
depend on one another. They make decisions together. They identify themselves as part of something larger than the sum of their individual relationships. Bigger. And a big one is commit themselves to the long term, in the long term, to their own, to one another, and to the group's well-being. So those are big ones. And why I do that is because I want people, you included of course, to think about what kind of communities you might have that fit those. And when I give talks, um, I emphasize something that's really important and that is for to be part of community is to emphasize the group. The group being thinking of the group and the others first. Now that's one that's a tough pill for most people to say, you mean I don't think of myself first? Well, you think of yourself, but you also think of the others and the group. So let that one sort of sink in a bit. So I tried to think of some groups that might cover that criteria. I might need your help on this. And that is, it might be a church group, it might be a 12-step recovery group, uh, maybe a, a seminar or a retreat where people need to make decisions. Now, but the thing that that doesn't do there's no long term unless you meet every year, for instance, and see each other in between. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you the good and the bad and some warnings about this. Um, I think it's really dangerous, and I use that word not lightly at all, for us to talk about community living without agreeing on what the definition is, and that's why I'm bringing it up. Because back to the romanticizing about community. We have our hearts set on community and don't see some of the red flags coming up. It's where, you know, oftentimes, and I've done this myself, so don't think that I'm without doing it. And that's why I'm saying it to you is I fall in love with the concept, the idea, and oftentimes the people without really checking in on do we have also shared values. It's kind of reminds me of dating in a way. It's like do we have a shared definition of community? Do we have a shared definition of what our values are? And also I think most groups that I have been part of have actually uh, get into the physical, what's it going to look like, where's it going to be, how many rooms do I get, how much does it cost, before actually having these things defined. What, what is it that we're doing, what is community, do we agree on this, and what are our shared values? Yeah, absolutely. And as Debbie says, someone you know who leaves the light on for you, would know if you weren't home or where you should be, knowing you're part of something bigger. I think probably I'd have, I, that's one of my ideas. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. I forgot that one. Long-term commitment. Yeah. So um, it's, it's about, community is about connections. I mean, I can make it long and involved, but it's about connections as well. So, questions for you guys. Who do you consider your community? Also, what qualities do those people actually have that you share? What are they? And do you really feel you have people that, uh, people that, that 
have your back. And it's easy to say, I want somebody to have my back, but it's reciprocal. It's both, and I have their back. I'm going to be there for them too, no matter what's going on. I mean, no matter what's going on. And, uh, and I think the last year and a half during COVID, uh, we've had an opportunity to really look at who is our community, who are our, who are we connected with. I mean, we've been given stark choices on who is in our bubble. I don't know that I ever had used that expression before in my life, and everybody uses it now and knows exactly what they're talking we're talking about. So. And also with Zoom and social media and all the ways that we are seemingly connected, uh, I think that the, the thing about this is that we want to make sure that we have a huge improve. It's a huge improvement from the telephone, and yet at the same time, are we really connected? So I'm asking all these questions of you because it's important to. That's kind of my job. The way I, f I figure it is that I I, I the things that I've learned, I'm going to ask you to ponder. Yeah, definitely ponder. Yeah. So th what's coming up next is a few, watch out, warnings, look out, oh my goodness. Uh, and that is the person who who you've been talking to, you've been in love with about their work, doing this community thing. And we hit, you hit a snag, you have a disagreement. And I've seen this over and over again, and that is the person acts like an eight-year-old and stomps out or and says, this isn't community. What does that mean? If you haven't already decided on what it means, anybody can say that and oftentimes actually do. So I'm saying to you, make sure you're ready for that when it happens so that maybe you can look at, have I, has this person, maybe I is probably better, have I put myself before the group, looked at that, those five things and said, is this really true? And hopefully for the good of the greater group, can we, can we resolve this? But it's, it's, a, it's a real big what is it? It's, it's, it's something that happens in almost every group. So I'm just saying, alert, 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 alert. So what can you do today? <clears throat> um, I'm gonna just give you, because it's, this is all about connection, information, and action. So I'm gonna give you some, uh, some assignments, some actions to take. And that would be, you know how you, I don't know about you, but I think about people now, and I always have, but I, don't, I didn't pick up the phone. So an example of that was when I was, was thinking about this talk with you guys, um, I picked up the phone and called my friend Zoe. She, she has family in New York, and I thought, well, I wonder how they're doing in the floods and all that, and she answered. And we had a not lovely conversation and I felt so much better and connected to her. I also texted my friend Kelly who takes care of my elder kitty because I know that she was part of the flood here in Asheville. And there's just so many people that we can check on and stay connected with. So that's what I'm, I'm saying to you. Reach out, connect. We got so many ways to do that. And as we come down to the, the stretch the, the, the here is, what I realized is there's so many of you that, and myself, that are in different places on this quest for community. You know, you might just be beginning or might have been talking about it and, and, and wanting it for years. And I'm nudging you along to say, understand what community is. What are the shared values that you have? Do it now. So as an example of that, uh, I think last week, those of you that were here knew that I, at the end, I gave away some of the books that I featured last week. 
And Barbara from Portland uh, was the first person to DM me, and she got the choice of any of the five, the six books. And I'm so glad, I was so tickled, that she actually chose my guidebook. So I sent it to her, and I also had a wonderful conversation with her uh, and found out that she and I were at the same conference in Portland, uh, <laughs> I think, gee, it was eight years ago. So the community is this very area, is a, sort of the movement is such a small group of people, and I hope you're gonna join us. Another person, Nat, who I see is with us today, I met her at the grocery store and, and uh, sold her one of my books. So she's on the very, very beginning of this. You see how, how the beginning, middle, moving right along. Yeah. And yesterday, Sonia and Jane visited me. Now, I, they have, they visited me at Glenway when we used to have meetups and showed the different ha house. And you'll, you'll see in past Facebook Lives that I lived there, why I left. So I encourage you to go back and look at some of those. But they visited there and then they heard me talk in Chapel Hill about shared living. And I mean, they've been on this quest and they're in a like jumping off place, I think. And it was a great visit. And that was, you know, six or seven years ago and still at it, just like me. These women are taking action. This is what I want everybody to take away from this. So to take some action towards your dream of community as it's defined by you with a little help from me. Now, if you're a subscriber to my Facebook, no, to my website, uh, I've finally gotten around to writing the next blog, which will come to you if you're a subscriber as an email. A lot of times that confuses people. So look for that. It's got some of the updates if you haven't been reading about the fun and, and, and things that I've done the last couple of years, moving from what I was going to do to what I am doing now, which gives you some idea of how fluid things can be. And I'm still going to do the webinar. It's a free webinar. And next week I will tell you the title that I have decided on, because that way I'm committed to having to do it, which is good. So bottom line, everybody, community is about connections. Stay connected. And next week, next week, next week is Monday afternoon. I'm going to be talking about safety and technology. And uh, I don't know how many of you have seen an ad that's for a woman who is laying on the ground and she has one of those button things. And she said, it says, I fell down and I couldn't get up. Well, we're gonna, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this from one of the websites that I absolutely love that I told you about last week. And I also might tell you a little bit about uh, my Christmas 2010. And remember, connection, information, and action. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Thank you all of you that made comments and hearts and thumbs up and knew that, that I know you're out there. Thank you, Julie, Debbie, Nat, uh, who else is out here? Thank you all, and just by the way, so those of you that are on replay, I'd love to hear from you and your comments. So I'll see you next week. Don't fall down. Thank you for being here, everybody.